trust God to bless us at his word. Amen. Shall we pray? And I will blow the shofar. Amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you for your precious word. We pray as we look at the life of Moses and the life of Israel. We thank you for redeeming Israel out of bondage, out of slavery from Egypt. And we want to thank you, Lord, for bringing them into that personal encounter with you, revealing to them your covenant and God truly touching their lives. But even as mankind, we tend to slip and turn away from you, but you graciously bring us back to yourself. We thank you for the intercession of Moses as he interceded for Israel to restore them back into this holy covenant. And we thank you, O Father, that you have fulfilled your plan for their lives in coming down with your presence in the tabernacle that you gave them to prepare. We thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you for making our bodies your temple. And we pray that you would fill us afresh during this Bible hour and study that you would visit us afresh and cause your presence to flood our soul in eternal shalom in the name of adonai yahoshua hamashiach and god's people shout amen and amen hallelujah so we'll quickly do the recap of last week's session six we saw the revelation from god the revelation of the old covenant we also saw the tabernacle and the revelation is given on mount sinai the offering for the tabernacle the revelation is given to israel on mount sinai the offering for the tabernacle and then we see the purpose of the tabernacle the ark of the covenant the table of shoe bread the golden lampstand the curtains of linen this whole pattern and purpose of the tabernacle given by god to his people praise be to god and all the kinds of skin that's the badger skins the ram skins the goat's hair fine linen talking about the prophet the badger skin is the priest the ram skin is the king and the goat's hair is a representation of the prophet. Amen. Fine linen is of righteousness. Okay. And then all the details of the tabernacle, the boards and sockets, the inner veil, the outer veil, the bronze altar, the coat of the tabernacle, the oil for the lamp, all in order with perfect dimensions given from heaven. When we receive the pattern from heaven, and we obey the Lord according to that pattern, that's when God moves by His Spirit. And we thank God that Jesus fulfilled the perfect pattern of the tabernacle when He came down into planet Earth. We also see the inner veil, the veil torn, amen, in the fulfillment with Jesus dying for us on the cross. We also see the brazen altar, amen, where the sacrifice was made with the animals and um, the blood sacrifice. We see the inner veil and the outer veil. We see the coat of the tabernacle. We see the oil for the lamp, amen, the clothing of the priest, the command to make the priest clothes, the afford. Uh, the breastplate of all the 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel, the white and the black stone, they were placed in a pocket behind the breastplate, close to the heart of the high priest. Today, 
we know it speaks of our conscience and we it speaks of the Holy Spirit in our hearts to lead us guide us to counsel us to teach us amen to lead us in the way as his presence goes before us we see the robe of the effort and uh, the beautiful golden bells and the tassels which are uh, the pomegranates amen so it's the fruit and the gift uh, alternatively placed the golden crown of the high priest holiness to the Lord on the forehead and that's what God has given us the mind of Christ who is holy unto the Lord and therefore we need to put off the old mind and put on the new mindset and that's the mind of Christ we see the consecration of the priest hallelujah then the altar of incense as we move into the inner court and then the ransom money and um, the shekels and uh, we see the labor of bronze amen that wash basin hallelujah with water to wash and the shining mirrors of the reflection that people could just clean themselves and sanctify themselves wash themselves clean for the priest we see the holy anointing oil the golden anointing oil we see the incense there and all the ingredients of the incense each uh, item and in each ingredients goes through the process which speaks of Christ himself and all the experiences of Christ amen as he became our model and he is our savior our Lord our everything instructions for building the tabernacle and today we will be touching a few things in a repeat but we can go a little faster maybe because we've looked into these things and then uh, we see the Ten Commandments the four commandments relating to God and six commands relating to man well today is the seventh session and the final session for the book of Exodus we are going to talk on the response of Israel to the covenant from chapter 32 verse 1 right up to chapter 40 and verse 38 we begin with Israel willfully breaking the covenant chapter 32 of the book of Exodus verses 1 to 6 now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him come make us gods that shall go before us for as for this Moses the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt we do not know what has become of him and Aaron said to them break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives your sons and your daughters and bring them to me so all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron and he received the gold from their hand and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf and they said this is your God O Israel that brought you out of the land of Egypt so when Aaron saw it he built an altar before it and Aaron made a proclamation and said tomorrow is a feast to the Lord that is Jehovah then they rose early on the next day offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play idolatry leads to immorality idolatry is spiritual adultery and here we see God's people forsaking the living God 
just because the leader Moses doesn't show up according to their timing and they ask Aaron to prepare a God for them and so out came from the gold a golden calf and a golden calf was worshipped in Egypt and it speaks of fertility they began worshipping and with that idolatry came even adultery and immorality then God had to destroy Israel and the Lord said to Moses go get down for your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them they have made themselves a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said this is your God O Israel that brought you out of the land of Egypt and the Lord said to Moses I have seen this people and indeed it is a stiff-necked people now therefore let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and I will make of you a great nation so God was very angry he wanted to destroy Israel mind you Aaron built an altar unto Jehovah but there was this golden calf very many people think when they build an altar unto God they, they think they are worshipping God but there are idols there in their lives and they need to get out the golden calf out of their lives the gods of this world even people persons and things that come between God and us become idols anything or anyone that comes between us and God and blocks the vision of God is an idol and we need to get rid of them from our minds from our hearts from our spirits out of the way so that we can worship the one and only true living God for first Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 says there is only one God and one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus hallelujah during this time in the wilderness we see that uh, Moses was the mediator for Israel and he could speak to God and he could hear God and speak to Israel God always wanted a direct communication with Israel but unfortunately they couldn't handle it and they wanted a man in between a mediator so that they could hear God through a man and that was very very unfortunate and so we see that God is really angry about what Israel has done it says here Moses intercedes okay for Israel then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said Lord why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand why should the Egyptians speak and say he brought them out to harm them to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth turn from your fierce wrath and relent from this harm to your people remember Abraham Isaac and Israel your servants to whom you swore by your own self and said to them I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and all this land that I have spoken I give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever so the Lord relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people praise be to God Moses stands in the gap for Israel but now Moses disciplines Israel 
verse 15 and Moses turned and went down from the mountain and the two tablets of the testament were in his hand the tablets were written on both sides on the one side and on the other they were written now the tablets were the work of God and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets and when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted he said to Moses there is a noise of war in the camp but he said it is not the noise of the shout of victory nor the noise of the cry of defeat but the sound of singing I hear so it was as soon as he came near the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing so Moses's anger became hot and he cast the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain then he took the calf which they had made burned it in the fire and ground it to powder and he scattered it on the water and made the children of Israel drink it and Moses said to Aaron what did this people do to you that you have brought so great a sin upon them so Aaron said do not let the anger of my Lord become hot you know the people that they are set on evil for they said to me make us gods that shall go before us as for this Moses the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt we do not know what has become of him and I said to them whoever has any gold let them break it off so they gave it to me and I cast it into the fire and this calf came out now this is a lie from Aaron my 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 he's not acknowledging that he has sinned against the Lord it's the same blame game as Adam and Eve so he's saying it's the people's fault as a leader he did not take on responsibility and this cough came out verse 25 now when Moses saw that the people were unrestrained for Aaron had not restrained them to their shame among their enemies then Moses stood in the entrance of the camp and said whoever is on the Lord's side come to me and all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him and he said to them thus says the Lord God of Israel let every man put his sword on his side and go in and out from entrance to entrance throughout the camp and let every man kill his brother every man his companion and every man his neighbor so the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses and about 3,000 men of the people fell that day when we look at this figure God is very specific 3,000 men died when the word of God was given to men the law of God was given to men the Ten Commandments was given to men and 3,000 men fell dead they were slain with the sword but mind you what a blessing in the new covenant 3,000 people were saved hallelujah when the Holy Spirit of God was given hallelujah isn't it wonderful the Holy Spirit came down on the Apostles and Peter preached the gospel in Acts chapter 2 and 3,000 were convicted cut to the heart they repented and they gave their lives to the Lord and their spirits were regenerated their dead spirits received life so here 3,000 died and in the new covenant 3,000 came alive hallelujah 
Praise be to God. Amen. Now, Moses atones for Israel. Verse 30. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moses said to the people, You have committed a great sin. So now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, All these people have committed a great sin and have made for themselves a god of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book, which you have written. And the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Moses was prepared to be blotted out of God's book of life. He was laying down his life for his people, for God's people, for the flock that God entrusted him with, with the nation of Israel. And when he made this plea, God had mercy. But he says, I will deal with the people. Verses 34 and 35, God sends his angel. Now therefore go, lead the people to the place of which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit for punishment, I will visit punishment upon them for their sin. So the Lord plagued the people because of what they did with the calf which Aaron made. There was the judgment of God. We come now to chapter 33. The tabernacle is moved outside the camp. Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying to your descendants, I will give it. And I will send my angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite and the Amorite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hevite and the Jebusite. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people, a very proud people, a people filled with pride. And when the people heard this bad news, they moaned and no one put on his ornaments. So there was kind of mourning, not feasting. They knocked off all their ornaments and they stripped themselves of all these things that uh, spoke of festivity. Verse 7, Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. Now this tabernacle of meeting is Moses' tent outside the camp. It was not the tabernacle, okay? So there are two different uh, Hebrew words used here. Now Moses talks to God. Verse 8. So it was when Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose and each one stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle and it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord that is Jehovah talked with Moses that was a sign that the presence of God was there why was there that pillar of cloud there, that whole cloud that descended because man couldn't see God, amen? God was clothed with the cloud. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped, each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke, this is corporate worship, each man in his tent door. So the whole household, representing the whole household, turned to God. So Jehovah spoke to Moses face 
to face as a man speaks to his friend wow God was Moses's friend God was Abraham's friend and God is your friend in Christ Jesus hallelujah as a man speaks to his friend and he would return to the camp but his servant Joshua the son of Nun or the son of Nun a young man did not depart from the tabernacle what commitment Joshua a servant of the servant of God amen was faithful and loyal to Moses and to Moses as God and his tabernacle. Amen. We must be committed and loyal to Christ. We must be faithful to Christ and his church and his leadership. Amen. God will show Moses the way. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. And consider that this nation is your people Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever although this is the dispensation of the law yet we see the grace of God abounding in Moses as well as amongst God's people and he said my presence will go with you and I will give you rest when God's presence goes before you, beloved, you will enjoy rest. You will enjoy shalom. When the Lord Jesus Christ is inside of you by his Holy Spirit, his presence goes before you. That is why what we spoke on Sunday, the war has been won on the cross of Calvary in the new covenant. Hallelujah. The battle is the Lord's, like in the case of Jehoshaphat. We see the presence of God going before his people. All we need to do is seek God's face, hear God, and keep praising him with thanksgiving in our hearts. As we praise God, battle is the Lord's. All we need to do is fight the good fight of faith hallelujah in the midst of every problem we can have praise and that will lift up your spirit no more in discouragement no more in depression but you will pierce the first heaven and pierce the second heaven and move into the third heaven hallelujah isn't it wonderful god is so good god is so good so God shows mercy. Verse 18. And he said, Please show me your glory. Hallelujah. Moses tells God, Show me your glory. And verse 19. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. Amen. We cannot question God. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Verse 20. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And Jehovah said, Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be when my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face 
shall not be seen. We are in the cleft of the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. In him we see Father God, Jehovah. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful? In chapter 34, there's a hewing of the two tablets, remember? Moses threw them down because he was angry when he saw Israel into idolatry. So those tablets of the Ten Commandments were broken, but now God gives him two other tablets. And the Lord said to Moses, cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I will write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. So be ready in the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. This was divine appointment on the mountain top, face to face with God. So be ready. Amen. We must be ready to meet with God at all times. Amen. And no man shall come up with you and let no man be seen throughout all the mountain. Let neither flocks nor herds feed before that mountain. So he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones that Moses rose early in the morning and went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. And he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. You see the tourist guides say that Mount Sinai is in Egypt and other scholars say it is in Saudi Arabia, wherever it is. Most probably it could be in Saudi Arabia, but we know it's a real place. The place where God gave his word to mankind. Hallelujah. The nature of God is revealed. Amen. Verse 5. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. That is Jehovah and the Lord passed before him and proclaim the Lord, the Lord, that is master, master, God, that is the supreme one, the sovereign one, merciful and gracious, long suffering, patient, that is, and abounding in goodness and truth. Hallelujah. Remember, grace and truth came through our Lord Jesus Christ, keeping mercy for thousands. He's the mercy seat. Amen forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. So Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worship. Then he said, If now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray, Oh, among us, even though we are a stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us as your inheritance. Hallelujah. And now we see the entering of the covenant, the renewal of the covenant. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all your people. I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Hallelujah. Verse 12, Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, lest it be a snare in your midst. He says, get rid of all the idolatry. In verse 14, for you shall worship no other God, for the Lord, that is Jehovah, shall, whose name is Jealous. God's name, one of his names is Jealous, is a jealous God. Remember, these are also, jealousy is a spirit, but also it's an emotion, it's positive and negative. God is a positive jealousy. He cannot tolerate anyone in relationship with us. 
amen, his people, because he will not tolerate any other God, because there is certainly no other God besides the one and only true living God. Amen. Because demons become gods. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land and they play the harlot with their gods and make sacrifice to their gods and one of them invites you and you eat of his sacrifice. So this is made very clear. And then you play the harlot for their gods. Oh my. So there needs to be that clear separation. Okay. It's all talking about the separation from God. And now Moses returns from God. Verse 29. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with God. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, being in the presence of God will cause his countenance to shine upon your face. Amen. And they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the children of Israel came near and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished, speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded. Verse 35, And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Now, chapter 35, we see that Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said to them, These are the words of which the Lord had commanded you to do. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh day shall be a holy day for you, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire. He goes on uh, with the instructions, okay? And then verse 5, he says, Take from among you an offering to the Lord, to Jehovah. Whoever is of a willing heart, these are key words, whoever is of a willing heart, say willing heart, willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to Jehovah, to the Lord, gold, silver and bronze, blue, purple and scarlet thread, fine linen and goat's hair, ram skin dyed red, badger skins and acacia wood, oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. And it goes on with all um, the things needed. And verse 10, all who are gifted artisans among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. Amen. Amen. And so here we get a shadow, a picture of the church, how we come and bring our tithes, our offerings to build the house of God. And we get involved with our skills and giftings and talents in the anointing of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says here, verse 21, Then everyone came whose heart was stirred, and everyone's whose spirit was willing, and they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting, for all its service and for the holy garments. Amen. They came both, not only men, both 
men and women, as many as had a willing heart. There must always be a willing heart in loving and serving God in the house of God and brought earrings and nose rings, rings and necklaces. Here now, look at the sacrifice, amen, unto the Lord for the house of God. All jewelry of gold, that is, every man who made an offering of gold to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's all the offering. Verse 25, all the women who were gifted artisans spun yarn. Amen. With their hands and brought what they had spun of blue, purple and scarlet and fine linen. And all the women whose hearts stirred with wisdom. Amen. We had the wise women last Sunday meeting together and my my wife was saying they had a gala time. Amen. These wise women uh, enjoyed themselves together. Well, these wise women were building the house of the Lord using their gifts and talents. And verse 27, the rulers brought onyx stones and the stones to be set in the effort and in the breastplate. Amen. The spices, all these things. Verse 29, the children of Israel brought a free will offering to the Lord. All the men and women whose hearts were willing to bring material for all kinds of work which the Lord by the hand of Moses had commanded to be done. Uh, verse 30, and Moses said to the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, or Bezalel, amen, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. Bezalel is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. God chose him, amen. It says from the tribe of Judah. Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. Amen. Jesus, the Son of God, Yahushua, was skilled in everything. Amen. Praise the Lord. And He has filled Him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding, in knowledge and all manner of workmanship. Amen. Jesus obeyed the Father to the T in perfection. He was the perfect tabernacle that came down from heaven to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze. Hallelujah. Divinity and redemption. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And suffering. Oh my, it's so beautiful. And he has put in his heart the ability, the anointing to teach in him and Aholiab, the son of Hamash of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do all manner of work of the engraver and the designer and the tapestry maker. Amen. In blue, purple and scarlet thread and fine linen and of the weaver, those who do every work, those who design artistic works. That's the wonderful thing God does. Amen. They bring in this offering that was in abundance for the tabernacle. In God's house, it, there must always be abundance. We believe in enjoying an abundant life in Christ Jesus, each one of us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see the wonderful thing God is doing in our lives. Amen. So each one is up to their task. And all these items are made by the women. We see the curtains all laid down, the boards that are set for the tabernacle, the veils that are prepared, the Ark of the Covenant with great skill, the whole presence of God, amen. The mercy seat, the golden cherubs. Wow, 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 isn't it wonderful, amen. So we see all that uh, wonderfully prepared. We see the table of showbread in the inner coat and the gold lampstand, the menorah, the seven candle lampstand, 
the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offerings, the bronze labor, the coat, all these things set up. The sum of the materials used in chapter 39, the clothes for the priests, it's all there. And this is reinstated as they are building the tabernacle and preparing today all the priestly garments in Israel are all ready. All the items for the third temple are all ready. It's, uh, it's the sign of the end time. Amen. And it will be set up and the uh, Antichrist will make peace with Israel and for a seven year uh, covenant and he will break it in three and a half years. But all this is being set up here in the book of Exodus in the wilderness. Holiness to the Lord in verse 30. Okay. And then we see in verse 32. The tabernacle is inspected by Moses. Amen. There must always be an inspection. Hallelujah. To see that things are done right. Moses delegated the responsibility of building the tabernacle to chosen people of God. Amen. And all the people coming forward with their offerings. But in the end, he as the ultimate leader in Israel had to inspect the tabernacle. Verse 32, thus all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished. Anything you take in hand, it is important that you finish it. The purpose that Jesus came into this world was to die on the cross and complete the work of redemption for mankind. And that is why he walked in obedience all through his life. He was the lamb that was spotless without sin and he died on the cross of Calvary, shedding his precious blood, spotless blood, and he redeemed mankind on the cross. He cried from the cross, finished. Amen. It is finished. Hallelujah. Jesus did a complete work. He died. He was buried. He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He was exalted on high. He's given a name which is above every other name and from the throne he shouts it's done hallelujah amen so he has finished the work of calvary in the foundation of the throne which is the altar of the cross but on the throne he shouts it's done so the root is in place and the fruit is in place hallelujah we do not follow religion where man says, it which is all man-made, and man says, do this, do that in order to be saved. The good news and the liberating spirit is when true Christianity says, it's done. God himself says, it's done. The work of redemption is finished. The work is done. All we need to do is receive his salvation by faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't it wonderful? So I would challenge every viewer, every listener right now in your home, wherever you are watching, listening, I would challenge you to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. You do not have to do anything. All you need to do is receive the good news, receive the faith in Christ, and receive Him as Lord and Savior of your life with genuine repentance, acknowledging that you have sinned against God and you need a Savior. You need the forgiveness of sins. You need the cleansing blood of Jesus. He's paid the price with His very own blood. Amen. And He's given you a free salvation, a free gift, which you do not have to pay because it has already been paid for. Hallelujah. 
All you need to do is maintain it by His grace and His mercy with His ability. Hallelujah. Working out your salvation in fear and trembling. Amen. So be blessed with eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so they did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All things were in place. Verse 43. Then Moses looked over all the work, and indeed they had done it. Wow! It was not only finished, it was done in this passage. You hear the word finished and you hear the word done. It's a done deal. God has done it for you. Amen. As the Lord had commanded, just so they had done it. And Moses blessed them. Just as Father God, Jehovah, commanded it, the Son, Yahushua, Jesus, did it. He finished it and it's done. Hallelujah. And he blesses you. Amen. The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is given to you so that by faith you can enjoy the grace of God and the mercy of God and the truth of God and enjoy the liberty of the Holy Spirit because when you know the truth the truth will set you free when you walk in the Spirit you will enjoy the liberty of the Holy Spirit and not the bondage of the law hallelujah Jesus has fulfilled it all he's fulfilled the Torah and the Psalms and the prophets amen all we need to do is abide in Him and enjoy the liberating experience of being born again and walking in the Spirit and not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. We see chapter 40, the tabernacle is erected. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The whole thing is set on. Amen. Now, when it is all in place, hallelujah, verse 33, okay. And he raised up the coat all around the tabernacle and the altar and hung up the screen of the coat gate. So Moses finished the work. Jesus finished the work. Hallelujah. Verses 34 to 38. God fills the tabernacle with his glory. Hallelujah. Verse 34, then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Earlier, the pillar of cloud would come down on Moses' tent pitched outside the camp called the tent of meeting but now the tabernacle of Moses for corporate worship has been set up the presence of God now must come down Exodus began with the coming out of Egypt out of slavery and bondage and under the rule and reign of the Pharaoh amen the rule and reign of the enemy, the devil and his demons, the bitter bondage, the slavery. We have come out of this bondage of sin and out of this world. Amen. Hallelujah. We've come to be redeemed. We've received his word. We've consecrated our lives. We've removed the idols from our lives. We've repented and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And now his glory has filled our bodies, which has become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. What's the glory of God? The invisible manifestation of the presence of God. But here 
we see the glory cloud. It is the presence of God, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Verse 35, And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting, because the cloud rested above it. And the glory of Jehovah filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. This was the guidance from the Lord. He told them when to camp, when to move on. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and fire was over it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel, throughout all their journeys. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we truly want to thank you for this wonderful book called The Exodus. A going out of Egypt and a coming in towards the promised land. We thank you for the preparation in the wilderness that you raised up a company of people, a nation, the nation of Israel, your very own people that you desired to be a model to the Gentile nations and all the nations of the world. We thank you for giving the pattern of heaven to Moses to build the tabernacle so that they would be right with you, they would be reconciled with you, they would make atonement so that they would become one with you and you would be one with them. You always desired to, to dwell in the midst of your people. We thank you, Lord, for all that we've learned this evening we pray our bodies would be carriers as wonderful tabernacles of your very presence power and wisdom your very own glory for we know christ the anointed one and his anointing is in us who is the hope of glory in the name of adonai yahoshua hamashiach we make this prayer. And God's people shout, Amen and Amen.